Alan's Urban back again. Just before Christmas this year, I was asked by a young man called Dan True to take a role in his dissertation film for a university. It was a very, very interesting role, which I thought was extremely worthwhile, and as a professional actor, I thought it gave me a load of scope and a lot of meat to the character. And I said, yes, I'd be really glad to accept. And then I started studying the subject. The person was a very intolerant head teacher. The subject was cyberbullying. The more I read, the more disturbed I became. As an older person, I found that I knew about it, yes it went on, and it was youngsters at school and college who did this sort of thing, but I didn't know the wreckage and carnage that it actually caused in people's lives how it wrecked the lives of young people and how it wrecked families. I studied it and I've decided now that it's about time this show, this show which as you know I like to bring issues to the fore, to speak about them and to see what we can do about them. The script of the film was extremely strong So I've asked along today the man who wrote it, Dan True, and the young lady who in the film was very badly bullied, Hermione Burrell. And we're going to discuss the film itself, my role in it, Hermione's role, and Dan's role in putting it together. Because not many people would perhaps realise that the worst year we've had for youngsters committing suicide was in 2001 when 240 youngsters just over the age of 10 up to 19 took their own lives. Last year in 2017, 231 youngsters took their own lives. 168 males and 63 females. 23% of those were down to cyberbullying. You can really say in that case, that's one youngster per week killed themselves over being victimised online. It's horrendous. It's scary. And it shouldn't be happening. We've got to do something about it. When you think in the United States, 33% of youngsters are being bullied. And in a survey, 7% of parents were actually worried about it. There aren't figures published for that in the UK. And that worries me. I mean, there was a young lad by the name of Tyler Long in the USA who killed himself. And the only problem that Tyler had was that he was gay. He was torn apart, literally, by guys at his college. When complaints were made, the college said, well, boys will be boys, and he's really just taking it the wrong way. Then I looked at my role in Dan's film as a headmaster, and that's exactly the person that I was playing. That made it even worse. We'll be dealing with more issues about the bullying and the culture of it, and who does it and why later. But I'm going to talk with Dan. Welcome Dan. Hi. And Hermione. Hi. 
welcome for mine. About the film now and its relevance and why it's affected both myself and Hermione and it has affected us in making this project. First of all, Dan, um, let's get a bit of a picture about you. Yep. Young man at uh, university and tell us exactly what you're studying. Uh, so I'm a third year film and television production student at Bucks University. Uh, this is my dissertation piece, uh, it's called Isolation. Um, so I've written the script, I'm directing it, I've casted all the actors and actresses and I'm also editing it all together. So yeah, this is my yeah, my piece for the next few months basically to hand in. A lot of hard work. Yeah, definitely. It's been yeah, a lot of things to do, very challenging, but obviously very re rewarding at the same time. So just a word to the wise for the people out there who think that students don't do much work and they're always in the <laughs> bar. Yeah. This guy has committed himself <laughs> to a heck of a lot of work. So what what actually was it that made you pick this subject, Dan? Um, so there's a few things, like when I knew that I had to make a film for my dissertation, the first thing I knew that I wanted to make was kind of a, a sad film in essence, because I feel as if that's the best thing to do for a student film on a low sort of budget. I feel as if it's easier to make that sort of film than like maybe a happier comedy film or something like that. And then um, another big reason was the TV show 13 Reasons Why. So I watched that over the summer and that kind of inspired me. I think that, oh, maybe this could be the sort of thing that I create my dissertation on. Um, and then from there, just kind of like going down Facebook and like seeing a few posts like, oh, I've been a victim of bullying in the past and things like that from like people I know. It's like, oh, it's actually like realness in my life. Like it's someone I know, things like that. And then just seeing articles online and it kind of all just came together and it's like, oh, I can do a film about cyberbullying and kind of a girl who's just had, had everything go wrong in her life effectively. Um, just we see like the last, like, well, the most up to date parts of her life where basically everything's just completely gone. So, yeah. Yeah. It must have taken quite a bit of imagination for you to produce that script because. Yeah. Of all the roles I've done as an actor, that is the strongest and most impressive script that I've ever worked with, and I congratulate Thank you. you on it. Um, to somewhat, to you know, to some extent, it really was scary because mm. it did give me a quite an uncomfortable Christmas. Yeah, sorry about that. The more I read on the subject, mm. the more uncomfortable it became. Yeah. Okay, you know, I'm sort of, without being personal, I'm probably old enough to be your grandfather. <laughs> but it's strange how much I don't know about this sort of thing. It's something that you th sort of think affects younger people. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It affects everybody. And, you know, I'm sad to say I've only just learned this. We know it's going on, yeah, and it happens, and it's younger people who are doing it. But it's only now that I've learned how it affects me. And your script has really bonked that out. Hermione, now, mm -hmm. you took on the role of Emma, the girl who's being bullied. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I took on the role of your headmaster. <laughs> Why, first of all, did you fancy applying for that role? I sort of, I've always wanted to play someone who, you know, is, isn't perfect, is flawed, and, but never sort of this sort of, to this extent, because she is so damaged and, you know, she's, she's so depressed and, you know, things are just piling on top of her and, and I just thought there's so many elements to this character. Um, you know, she's, yeah, she is depressed, but she's got this, you know, she has, a, the, the, her last resort basically is going to her headmaster, which, you know, shouldn't, the first and last resort should be, you know, her parents, but, um, 
and I, you know, I'm, I'm always up for a challenge. If, you know, if I want to do anything that scares me, really. And this role did scare me because I thought, you know, it's difficult. Um, but I want to have a go because in the past I've been cast for quite, you know, sort of brash characters, quite, you know, ballsy. But this one is the complete opposite. Um, and that really excited me, actually. So, uh, yeah. And I, you know, we were filming yesterday and it was, it was challenging. But, um, yeah, it's... It's a good challenge. Excellent. Well, as we know, you are an up-and-coming actress. Um, I believe at the age of 16 you were in the TV series Home Fires, where was, you were yep. basically just a wartime child. Yeah, not, not much at all. Uh, but... <laughs> but that's where I, well, as they say, caught the bug. Yeah, you started, and since then you've worked behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And... Um, not being one to reveal anybody's age, because as I say, I'm old enough to be your grandfather. <laughs> uh, but um, you're now 19 and yep. moving on with a view to a career in acting? I think so. I'm sort of debating whether I want to go into the, the art world or, or acting, but they're both very similar. Um, yeah, they're both they're so connected. Creative, creative and, yeah. So we'd like to see you come forward and... Yeah, definitely. Seriously, uh, as I see this role as Emma, I looked at it first off when I read through Dan's script and I thought, well, this is going to be a challenge for anybody. And for you to take that on, you know, off comes the hat. Seriously. But um, at the moment you're studying at um, Oxford Brookes University. I am, yes, yep. Art and design. And, uh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus, uh, we've got love from Hermione, your um, yeah, my jewelry design. Online jewelry business. Yeah. yeah jewelry designer. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So that'll take your mind off being terrorised by cyber <laughs> bullies. It will, As definitely. <laughs> but um, you've really got your teeth into the past. Yeah, yeah. And, but what effect has it had on you? It's, it's something that is very, at the moment, it's very raw and it has affected me, um, sort of, I've had some personal sort of stuff going on which is very similar to what's going on in this and, and I think in a way it's made it easier for me to sort of play the part of Emma and really get into her shoes and delve deep into what she's actually thinking and feeling. Um, but then it has made it hard because, you know, you you so want to be that character and really, you know, feel what they're feeling, but then you don't want to overstep the mark and go too much that it actually affects you, you know, because um, you can get so involved and then as soon as, you know, the director goes cut, you snap back into reality, but sometimes you don't and you, it sort of sticks with you all day and so it's trying to find that balance really, um, yeah. Yeah, I think we've all had those um, moments where the role just won't leave you yeah, alone. Yeah, yeah. I've certainly had them. Yeah. Uh, but just to come back to yourself at the moment then, um, when it came to casting Emma, mm. it must have been a challenge for you to find the right actress. Yeah, definitely. Like I had a lot of interest in all the roles, but especially Emma, obviously, mm. as as a lead role so it's just a matter of going through like everyone who applied getting them to come down and obviously visit the room where we did all the auditions kind of record then go back afterwards and play through and I felt that Hermione was the best role she's done a good job so far so I'm very, very happy <laughs> excellent because um, I'll say from experience myself and I know that Lauren would agree with me on this, that unless you've got the right subject, then, I say subject, uh, why I should rephrase that, unless you've got the right person, something like this could have a very bad effect on them. Mm. Yeah. Seriously. I'll come to my role briefly as Michael, the headmaster. 
I had a couple of years instructor at the Merchant Navy College and I was probably not the friendliest of instructors. I look back at myself now and I think there's a bit of that person in you, but as I said to you, first of all, I could relate to life in that character. And I think, well, perhaps 30 years ago, I did things wrongly, but we can all look at hindsight. We have yet to cross swords properly mm -hmm. for the yeah. final end part of mm -hmm. it, and uh, that's going to be very, very interesting. interesting. isn't it? Yeah. Because I think by the end of it, you're going to want to literally give me a <laughs> right hander. <laughs> but um, everything so far, yes, it has had an effect on you. Do you think mm -hmm. it's going to carry through the effect? Or Will it remain in your mind? Definitely, because it's a subject that is going on, you know, so much at the moment, and it's so topical, and it's something that will, you know, will never leave me. Um, and actually, playing it such a you know, a character like Emma is just—it's brilliant because you know you can really sort of understand what she's feeling and why, and then you can relate it to all the sort of issues happening at the moment with cyberbullying. Um, yeah, so it's, it, it's, it's good. Because you very gently alluded to the fact of issues going on around you and I know that you have had a period now which has affected mm. you, but um, that's something that is not here for discussion today. No. Um, obviously that must have come up quite strongly in the way you're portraying this character. Yeah, yeah. Because, as I say, I've had my thoughts of my past life, mm, mm. Uh, which have come into it, and I think this proves that the strength of Dan's script, in the fact that he's bringing life out in us, playing it. Okay, I would have loved to have had the whole cast yeah. up to talk to them about it, and Maybe I can, um, I think we're filming a Saturday, mm -hmm. maybe I could chat to the others then and um, yeah. catch their drift on it, but uh, we have of course a further thing to do on this in which you have agreed to Dan, that um, you're going to assist me in taking this out further into the wide world, but yeah. that's something yeah to come to later. But do you feel that this film has a purpose to play in life? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's something that I want people to see and say they're like, oh, wow. Like, so you think that this film will actually have relevance within the... Yeah, yeah. It's definitely something I feel as if when people are going to see they're going to be like, oh, wow, yeah, this is a actual issue within society that's maybe not brought up within general our uh, general media like, as much as it should be. Like you said earlier, the fact that 200 people have obviously committed suicide from this issue within the past year, that's a massive number that we just really shouldn't be that high, it shouldn't be anything at all. And like, take it into context where it's one a week or however many it was, it's, yeah, it's way too many. I think hopefully obviously this film is going to do something to that when people have my sort of age and younger see it and be like, oh wow, this is what, if I am mean to this person, this is what they could end up doing. And I have that with me for the rest of my life. So, that's, yeah, that's the whole purpose of it. I personally think this is a brilliant tool to use um, to get it across and hopefully, you know, we will be able to move it along there. And mm -hmm. to be honest, Dan, I think You've sown a fantastic seed in perhaps us being able to get this out into the world. Mm. Um, I'll 
Thomas Hermione is an actress. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm saying again, an up and coming actress, very good as well. Um, do you agree with me that theatre is one fantastic medium? Drama is a fantastic medium for getting a point across. Completely, yeah, absolutely. Um, I remember I saw a play probably about three years ago now, and it was oh gosh, it was called um, a, I think a Beautiful Life. I think it had Charlie Brooks in, and it was all about this this boy who was gay, and it was just I can't remember very clearly. But it was just the most incredible play, and it was quite tongue in cheek. But you know, I was what sort of sixteen at the time, and it really it had a huge impact on me actually about you know the sort of LGBTQ plus community, and because I don't really know much about it, and there's a lot in the news, and there's a lot of you know um, stories on it, and that play really sort of you know educated me, and I think. Education, theatre, and education is brilliant. Um, yeah. Excellent. Because what I've actually asked Dan to do is to produce a script for me, loosely based around the film, which we, as moving on theatre, can take into the education sphere in schools. I was sickened when I, f I found out from a relative of mine who is a primary school teacher, when he told me that he's dealing with nine year olds who are cyber bullying. Nine year olds. It absolutely sickened me to my stomach. And then I read of an eight-year-old in Australia killing himself because he was being cyber-bullied. You know, I've lived a great life at you know, 64 years of age. And think that those kids, because of something like this, are never going to see what I've seen. I'm never going to enjoy what I've enjoyed. I just find it horrendous. And if we can use this medium to take this into a school, for the younger children, yeah, we, we will use actresses, and I'm pleased to say that a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful organisation that I'm with called The Real Scene have taught me so much about acting and drama and theatre and it's brilliant with top actors and actresses they're coming and tutoring and I've worked with them as well I've had guys now young students who have volunteered and said, yeah, we'll come out and act the roles for you, for the younger kids. Yeah, we'll do it in our free time because we believe in this. It's due to this guy. They've read his script. And they said, wow. Quite a well-known actor has said to me that there are some actors he knows who won't be able to play the role that you're doing because they find it too emotionally challenging. The end. But the biggest part is that we want drama classes in schools to be tutored for a short while by one or two actresses and then get them to play the roles of the bullies, Emma, and a voice off stage to narrate and read, read what the text would say. Then, questions and answers. If it just takes one person to say, oh God, yeah, I'm having fun doing this, it's a great laugh, 
oh no, it's not, I could kill somebody. I'm not going to do that anymore. And it saves one person from being on the wrong end of that. Then we've succeeded. It's got to be done. But hopefully we'll get more than one person. And there's, there are. The minute I mention this in a real scene theatre group and said, is there anybody who care to help me out? Bang. They were there. And one young lass who was there said, yeah, I've had it myself. I'm keen to help. She's recovered from So that sets our scene for cyberbullying and the recognition of what goes on. We'll be going further into this. We'll be speaking to somebody who's been the parent of a child who's suffered it and will understand her words how she found out the horror of it. We'll be speaking about the nine-year-olds who are involved in it. And even more things to come, which are just as horrific. But I'm so grateful for Dan and Hermione coming in today to talk to us, because I think they set a benchmark in doing this film. It's something that we can start using to try to make, if we can make that much of an improvement in doing something about this, it's something. So I'm so grateful for, for both of them for doing it. Dan, keep up the excellent work. Thank you. And all the best in your career, good sir. Thank you. And Riley. Thank you. To you, and thank you very much for yeah. coming in. Well, I look forward to working with you. <laughs> and you. <laughs> Right, we're now going to take a short break. A few messages. When we return, Lauren will be sat here instead of me whilst I try to recover my voice, which is rapidly going. And she'll be chatting to Dan and Hermione to see what ideas they have for solutions to this awful, awful problem. See you soon. Welcome to Moving On TV, the new TV channel for us, the positive, inspirational TV channel. My name is Lauren Hope. I am the founder and CEO of Moving On TV. No one is ordinary. We're all special, unique, wonderful human beings. We're all celebrities with our own talents and strengths and dreams. Moving On TV is here for all of us. We have a book show if you wrote a book. We're looking for talent, for moving on talent. We want to stream you. We don't want you to compete. Artists shouldn't have to compete. It's disrespectful. And we're going to produce a new musical. And you could be in it. And we're going to serialize it for everyone. We're not going to have the news. We're going to have the happy news. Positive, inspirational, happy stories which are actually the majority of the stories in the world that are happening all around us, except no one wants to give them to you. And of course, because we're run by solution-based people, life coaches, we want to give you the truth and to help you move on. So we want to know why these tragedies are happening all around us. Why are so many people being hit off their bicycles? What is the solution to all these problems in our world? How can we have a better world, a more peaceful world? We're looking for you. We're looking for all of you. Everyone has a unique story. We're looking for hosts, presenters, all age groups, particularly older people that are not being given any opportunities. Come and work on our media. Cameramen, editor, editors, anyone who wants to work with us. And of course, sponsors. 
organic makeup and organic products that are helping the environment and the human race. Come on board Moving On TV, the new positive channel, the channel that gives you hope. You can contact me at Lauren with an E at movingontv.uk. Don't get depressed. Come on board Moving On TV. See you soon. Bye. Hello, my name is Martin Ottawa of Martin Ottawa Hypnotherapy. I specialize in smoking cessation, weight loss, phobia release, stress management, and hypnobirthing. I can do a free assessment via the phone, via Skype, or face-to-face -face at any time. So that's Martin Ottawa of Martin Ottawa Hypnotherapy. Looking forward to your call now. You can also find me on my Facebook page, which is Martin Oswell Hypnotherapy. Hi, guys, and welcome back to part two of the Alan Thurman Show. And I'm a guest interviewer, I'm very excited about that. And I'm here to look at solutions. As you know, Moving On TV was set up for us to try and create a better world, a better community. And so I'm really happy to have Hermani and Dan here today. And um, just to say, I went through a lot of bullying as a child. I went through abuse as a child. Um, I had a very dysfunctional family and I went through a lot. And also as an adult, I've been through quite a lot of bullying. Just very quickly, um, I have a mental illness, everyone knows, borderline personality disorder. I was in a therapeutic community for 18 months and I was bullied a lot in there, not physically, but bullied with a lot of tough love, um, but I came through. And as far as I'm concerned, the reason I came through is because I found my creativity. My creativity is I'm an actress as well. I run Moving On Theatre and I perform as Edith Piaf, uh, the French singer. And she was a heroin addict and she was in institutions and thinking while, it, while Alan was interviewing you, how do I not get caught up in it? It's because um, you can't. That's the answer. You can't, um, uh, Hermione. The whole world is going through so much. I mean, if we look at the reality of the world of bullying, if we look at what happens to actresses and the amount of bullying that you're going to have to learn how to deal with, if you look at 27 million women and children that are being sex slaved, I am not yeah. lying about this, I'm yeah. telling it how it is. We can only do our bit. Exactly. So I'm here today to find out what can we do. Mm. How can we help not only the victims, but also the bullies? What's going on here? What's going on here? So let's talk to Dan first, as you're the one who's written the script, and you've written this wonderful script, which I'm still really looking forward to seeing. Yes. What do you think? I mean, let's have a look, first of all, at the point of view of the person who's being bullied. What can be done more from society, schools, um, like creativity, as I say, is such an important part of it. It's finding the uniqueness and developing their confidence. Yeah. So how can we do that? Do you think? Um, I think because cyber bullying is obviously a relatively new thing with the advancement of technology, so obviously accessibility to mobile phones, computers, stuff like that is so easy now. And even when I was growing up, when I was like 12, 13, I didn't have a phone or anything like that. So I wasn't on social media, whereas you see like eight-year-olds and stuff now with Facebook accounts. Mm. Like, it's kind of ridiculous. So I think maybe mm within schools they need to start educating at a younger age about social media, what it is, what can you do on it, things like that. Because I don't think, at that sort of age you're obviously not mature enough to realise the power of social media. Um, so I feel as if schools can implement something, even if it's like, like a two hour seminar or something like that about, right, this is, like, this is what Facebook is basically, or this is what Twitter is. You can talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime, like across the world. It's like you can talk to someone in Australia instantly. Mm. And if people like teachers or someone educates them at a young age, they realise like, oh wow, I can do this. And if I like, say a Nazi comment to someone, 
it's going to have this effect on them. So fears of bullying at a young age, the main reason for it is because the people who do the bullying, they don't understand the other person's kind of what they're feeling. Mm. So I think, yeah, just general education at younger ages about social media is would probably be quite a big really step and a good idea. That sounds really, society. really good because yeah. I'll tell you that a lot, I know a lot of parents are actually taking those kids out of school now. Mm. They're homeschooling them. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons is that mm. maybe we could bring someone on from from schools and ask them what you're going to do yeah. about social media because you can't just ignore this exactly. and you're, obviously your film's going to highlight it in a yeah. big way. Right. Thank it's such you. A, it's such a big thing nowadays. Mm. So yeah, it's definitely something that needs more care and attention taken. I think also the parents are very responsible yeah. and just, just don't let your children go on Facebook, you know. Mm -hmm. I know it's easier said yeah, than done, yeah. but I think some, you need to have healthier boundaries maybe. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. What about yourself, Erin? What do you think? I agree with Dan. I mean, age eight, I was playing with Barbies and ponies mm -hmm. and I was not on a phone, you know, texting my friends and on Facebook and stuff. Um, and I, it's, I can't begin to comprehend how sort of strange it is to have people that young, you know, in, in, in this world, online, on, you know, huge social media sites. Mm. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's bizarre. Um, I think the, the, the main thing is, I mean, you were saying earlier, is it Sah Sahara? Sah Saraha. Saraha. We are that. going to bring uh, Eben on at some point, uh, yeah. he's a young mm -hmm. man. How can this happen? It's awful. Yeah, yeah. Anonymous but anyway, like, as we yeah. say, we have to try and stop it. So, mm, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's things like that yeah. that are being created, you know, the entire mm -hmm. time, yeah. which is just so unhealthy. It is, yeah. There is an element in our world that is very negative mm -hmm. and very dark. Mm -hmm. And so we're here to try and spread as much light as possible yeah. around, as you say, you know, <laughs> you were playing with dolls and you were innocent and, and yeah. so your parents didn't give you a mobile phone. Um, yeah, well, I, or, I sort um, of, it all sort of kicked off, I guess, sort of the whole phone age and I was probably about 12 or 13 because um, I went to a boarding school so right. we, we were allowed to have phones to call our parents. So, mm -hmm. um, and that was when we had like these brick phones. I mean, I sound really old. I'm not. I'm 19. <laughs> like, what I don't think we had but, Facebook. But we, we Facebook? yeah, no, we had Facebook. But I, Facebook, I, yeah. no one was really that interested in it. Mm. But I just had this like pink little flip up phone. And all you could do was call people. Mm. But now you know, the iPhone and everything, you could do absolutely everything on it. I know. Um, I know, and it can be very good, but also it, very yeah, damaging. very. You know, you can access mm. the other. You can access all sorts of sites. Mm which is really quite dangerous. Um, well, actually, you can go on the internet and when it comes up, the pop-up says, are you over 18? Mm. I've tried it and if you click no, it still oh, goes yeah, yeah. on to sites that there's no mm. way on this planet that you know mm. young people should be looking at. Mm. So, you see, the other thing is the other side, the flip side, the side of the bully, which mm. is the side I'm very interested in. And I did see a wonderful film a little while ago where they did actually take on um, a bully and they followed her around and, and she actually started to watch what was going on. They started to watch what was going on with her life and she started to watch what was going on with the person she was bullying. Mm -hmm. And she completely broke down at the end of it and really, really, you, you could see how sorry she was. Now, why do you think people bully? Why do you think young people in particular feel that they need to do this? Um. I think, again, like not enough awareness about the person they're bullying, so they kind of think it's maybe a game and like they don't realise how much it's actually affecting them. Also on the flip side, maybe, I think quite a lot of bullying stems from an issue with the bully themselves. Of course. So maybe, maybe even they're being bullied by someone else, or they're having problems like with their family or something else, and they use bullying as a technique almost to relieve stress on themselves and put it on others. And, it, and they want to make other people feel down like they do, effectively. Mm -hmm. So they don't like seeing other people just being happy and stuff like that. They yes. want everyone to feel like them. So do you, do you believe that it, the only people that can cause pain are those that are in pain themselves? Because um, you guess, can't really hurt yeah, people if you're not hurting yeah, them in I guess some so. way. Yeah, yeah. Don't I, you think? I'd say I agree with that, yeah. Yeah. So 
it would be quite interesting to find out more about what's going on in order to find, you know, to be able to help the situation. As I say, I think we need to look at both sides. What, what do you think, Aaron? I think a lot of it is down to the parenting. Um, because, I don't know, like, my parents, I'm very close to them, and they've always brought me up to treat everyone with respect, be kind to everyone, even if, you know, you don't like them or whatever. You always treat them nicely. But I think that's it's sort of dying out a bit, and a lot of people just, you know, they don't have that respect at all. Mm. And that's when they start to, you know, that's when the online stuff, because because they just don't know. Mm. Um, and that's you know basic basic manners, I think, um, that people aren't taught from a young age, which then stem, you know, into bullies and and you know that that sort of thing. So I think parenting is definitely an aspect. What about awareness, building awareness? Because another thing I like to think about is interfaith, multiculturalism, and the reason we have wars is because we don't know enough about each yeah. other. Yeah. And the minute you spread more awareness, mm. then you're able to deal with it. So actually building more awareness of how we're all unique and we're all different. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you need to be scared of it. Or mm. I think maybe there's an element of fear in that there in somewhere as that. well. and. It, it's it's a very interesting mm. subject, and I would very very much like to bring on the the actors that are actually doing the bullying. Um, who are they in your film, by the way? Um, so there's not one specific bully in my film. Right. The person who you see in the film um, who does like the most abuse, I guess you could say, is Eric, who is um, Emma or Hermione's stepfather within the film. So you see him basically An barging adult. into her room. Yep, so it's her stepfather. I see. Um, but she also gets bullied online, but you don't actually physically see the bullies. Like you see a few girls for a split second like laughing at mm. Emma as she comes out of her headmaster's room. Um, but yeah, so the main portion of the film where you do see her get physically bullied is her stepfather who comes into her room like shouts her, at one point he throws a beer can at her and stuff like that. So that's the main part of it. So. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on to Moving On TV. It's been a pleasure having you here. And we will be following this up. I think what Alan is doing is remarkable. And I'm just saying to you, if you're being bullied by anyone in any way, not just cyberbullying, or you're actually the person that's doing the bullying, from the heart, I want you to come here. And I want you to talk to me and explain to me what is it? What's the motivation? Are you under pressure? Is it peer pressure from your friends to actually do this? Is there something going on with your life? Have you been hurt? Come on board Moving On TV. Come on to this program. Come on to the workshops that Moving On Theatre will be doing. But please keep in touch with us. Contact me with Lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N-E at movingontv.uk or call me on 07437 532 798. It's been a pleasure being with everyone today here at the beautiful Micklefield Library. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Alan Thurban Show. Take care now. Namaste. Bye.